Hello, I'm Troy Parker, president of Innovative Labor and Cleaning, and this is another Mental Health Monday. And we're still working on our goals and how we're gonna manifest them. We talked about setting the goals, creating the play. We talked about writing out our affirmation, which is our I'm so happy and grateful in the present tense. Then we talked about creating a small little script that we play in our mind, our little movie, of how we're gonna see it after it's completed, something that will show, hey, boom, this is done. You know, like if it's a car, car's in the garage. You see, it's in your garage right next to your other car. But now we gotta talk about the action steps because some people will sit and say, okay, because they learned from the secret. If I just see it and all of a sudden it'll just pop up, that's not really how it works. You have to do some action. Now, how are you gonna know what action to take? And this is something a lot of people ask me. How you're gonna know the action to take is most of the time, it will come as little hunches. So, say for instance, your goal was to make 250,000 uh, and after taxes, you got to 200. Now, like I said, I would just say I want the 200,000. But if you tie it to your job and say, I wanna have this much in sales, okay, that makes you feel comfortable. There's nothing wrong with that. You may get a hunch that, man, I should go stop over here um, at this new company because they'll probably need our product. That would be in the form of a hunch. Or you may just pick up the business courier and you say, wow, such and such is building a place you know, here and it'll, it'll be up and built next year. That could be a hunch. You know, they may need some of your products that you sell something in construction field that, hey, they might need what I sell and that would be a big sale. Sometime it just comes with just little intuitions that pop up. Say for instance, your health goal. Let's say you don't have a gym membership, you just had a little elliptical machine that you use as basically a you know clothes hanger because you just throw your clothes on it and you know that, okay, I'm, I'm not really good at getting up and getting on that thing. Then you see a $9.99 special to go to eSparta or Crunch Fitness for $9 a month. That could be the action, the action that, hey, I need to join there because I go there, other people are working out, that'll work better for me. In starting these new habits that are gonna to build towards reaching our goal. Sometime if you have a problem, let's say it's your exercise goal, and let's say that you're not already at your ideal weight, you know, say you're 200 pounds, you wanna to get to 170. But you'll start, you know, and you'll get on your little machine at home, and you'll do it for a little bit of time, maybe a week, then you know, oh, then you're back to throwing your underwear and your jacket on it, and you don't get on it anymore. It might be a good idea to either hire a personal trainer, Get somebody to train with you, like a buddy that you, your girlfriend that you know, you know, a guy and a girl work out together, that you're friends and you both wanna lose weight to help you be accountable. Because this will help you establish the habit. Because all we're trying to do here is program habits into our subconscious mind that will then take them and then we will automatically do them just like the habits you've already started that is say for instance you're 200 pounds 250 pounds there are habits that you are doing right now whether it's eating a bunch of pizza and hoagies and you know drinking a lot of beer or whatever that have got you to the 200 or 250 or whatever the weight is and you automatically do them because you really don't think about it. You just say, oh, just let me get the, the large you know, meat lovers. And you just, okay, I love this. And you go home and you get a beer or you whatever you do. You might even get a diet soda. Some people do that. They get a big greasy fat pizza and then they'll get a diet soda. Then you just eat it, but it becomes a habit. I know for myself, it was always, I'll be honest with you, Pop-Tarts. Sometime I'll open up two packages of Pop-Tarts knowing I only need to eat one of them. But I'll sit there and eat all four. And I don't even think about it. I just go down and get my little Pop-Tart, pop them in there. This, this, this. But now that little voice tells you like, this is totally taking you away from your goal, Troy. It's like that little character that used to be in the Flintstones, Kazoo. They just pop up and then they say, uh, now Troy, four Pop-Tarts. And then you just try to override it. But over time, these habits will stop because you'll start creating new habits. First, you get the workout buddy, or you get a personal trainer, or you just go to the gym yourself to work out. If you have a problem just showing up, it may be good the first week, just get up and take your butt to the gym and don't do anything. Or maybe get on the elliptical and you just ride for two minutes, get off, go back home. Now people will be like, why the heck would you do that? I mean, you're there, you might as well ride it. What you're trying to do or what I'm trying to do is create the habit of just getting there. 
because if you can't even get there, you're never gonna get the rest of it done. You're not gonna get a 30 minute workout or a 45 minute workout because you're still at home. So if you have a treadmill that you've been hanging your boxers on, the first week, just get up at a certain time, six o'clock, get on the treadmill and ride it for two minutes and get off. Now, that is a success because the more you keep doing it, getting up, getting on, getting on, I don't care if you do it for two weeks, do it one week, do it for two minutes, ride it for two minutes, then the next week, ride it for three minutes. Because after doing that for 14 days, now you've created the habit of getting up and doing something. Now all we're gonna do is work on what it is you're doing once you do that, once you get up. The first part of the battle getting you there is already done. The same with the personal trainer. Now you set up a personal trainer. Some people, if you have the money for that, then get a personal trainer, or maybe you and a friend could go in and get the personal trainer. Uh, the first week here, we're just gonna come here and we're gonna work out for five minutes and leave because we just wanna get the habit of coming. Then once you get the habit of coming there, then you can slowly increase. And you'll never succeed if you jump out there and think, okay, I gotta start off with weight training for 45 minutes, Oh, I gotta start off running, you know, 45 minutes on the elliptical. First of all, you'll burn yourself out. You'll probably be all achy and sore, and then you're not gonna wanna do it because you're sore, so that'll be your excuse. Like, oh, my, my back, uh, I'm just gonna stay home. I gotta, I gotta nerf my, I think I pulled something. And, and really, it's just your muscles saying, what the hell? Because they haven't been doing anything. Start off slow, just ride for a minute or two, get the hell off. Next day, ride for a minute or two, get the hell off. Then the next week, maybe five minutes. Before you know it, you'll be at 10, 15, 20 minutes. Take baby steps because it's the long game. What you're looking at, the long game. It's not to get out there and you work 60 minutes only to do it for three days and then you're gone. So the action steps in the exercise, it would be those I just mentioned. If it's work related, the action steps could come to you in things like you plan out, okay, I'm trying to make this much and my average sale is this much. I need to make this many sales to make this many sales. I got to make this many contacts either by email, passing cars out, flyers and get a marketing plan and see what that does and kind of track that and get the metrics on that. And then you'll come up with a way to say, okay, doing these activities, get me this much in dollars. If it's something with your family, they say it's okay. I want to make my relationship better with my kids and my wife. That's kind of two different things. So you say, okay, first of all, we're gonna have a family night where we, we get pizza and we watch a movie and that's gonna be like, we like to do it on Wednesday night because it kind of breaks up the week. You got something to look forward to. Cause you know, most people sit there like, oh God, you know, it's Wednesday. Oh my God, we got, we got you know, two more days till the weekend. But if there's something, you know, fun on Wednesday that you do, like, you, you know, we might start going to the movie. You can go to the movie cause hell, ain't nobody really going now. We went to the movies a week ago and there was only us and that was five of us and you know two other people or just do a movie at home get some pizza sit down you know the kids do their homework and you do a family time then you might have another day of the week you know whatever your religion is you do like a little bible reading you know you read so much of the bible that you know start with the oldest kid or you start as the father or the mother or and then you let you know the next child read then the next child and then you kind of talk about it now when it comes to your wife or your husband it could be something totally different now i'm a big date night believer you're married you know your wife or husband or mate whatever they do a lot my wife you know deals with the grandkids deal with the kids and sacrifices a lot keeps the house clean the laundry all that stuff you know plus she helps in the business sometime the date night throw it in during the week so say for instance you might say date night ours a lot of time is tuesday we'll go out it doesn't have to be expensive go out somewhere someplace she likes you know is a break from everything and just maybe have a meal or a meal in a movie but then you want to also spend more quality time big ziggler used to say most women think that their husbands don't think about them until the lights go out at night you don't want to show your wife your mate your spouse attention prior to the lights going off. So, you know, when you come home, make it a point daily. This could be one of the things you put on your action step. I want to make sure I come home and stop and take 15 minutes and talk to my wife about how her day went. Cause you know, a lot of times, and I know as men do it, we just go on and on about our day where our wife just sits there. Oh, that's, that's too bad. Or your mate may do it. Stop and say, you know, when you first come in, give your wife or your mate a good hug and a kiss, like you mean it, not just a little, and then you keep going, you know, actually embrace them. And then say, well, how was your day? And stop and really listen. 
and then ask questions. Make sure you, you listen to a few things she says and then say, well, oh, what do you think about that? Or, hey, well, how did this happen? And ask questions. Then she knows you're engaged and you're interested in what she's doing or he's doing. Then then you're gonna put these down as action steps that you do every day. Now, the, the little intuitions you have, those you're not gonna be able to write down because you don't know when you're gonna have them. But when you have them, the key is to write them down. Because as you write these things down and look back and say, okay, I got this. This came to me to stop over here because they're building this product and I sell this construction product. So that would be a good sale. And then it worked out. Then you say, okay, I have the, the family night every Wednesday. Make sure you write down every Wednesday, family night. Tuesday might be date night. Or you might say, hey, your date night has to wait till Friday or Saturday. That's when you set up the babysitter or that just works best for you. That's fine. That's date night. And then, you know, your wife looking forward to it, you know, your, your mate, you know, what, what have you, is looking forward to it because that's you guys' time. And that might be the action steps you take in those areas. The exercise, you say, okay, hey, I'm gonna get a personal trainer, I'm gonna get a gym membership. First week, I'm gonna go five minutes. Next week, I'm gonna go eight minutes. I'm gonna go there, ride for two or three minutes, and then go home and develop the habit. Before you know it, you'll look back and you'll see, golly, Man, back in January, I was only riding two minutes, and now here I am in May or July, I'm at the gym, and I'm exercising for 45 minutes. So, you're gonna look for any, you know, ideals that pop in your mind that lead you closer to one, or maybe you get something on all of them. Then you're gonna sit down and write down action steps that you know of, that, well, okay, what is something I can do to make my marriage stronger? The date night the coming home and you know spending 15 minutes just talking to her before you go to work little things like that it's not gonna have to be a bunch of big things a lot of times it's just little bitty things that you do that will help make your marriage your relationship stronger same with your work sometimes it's the little things you do making that extra four or five calls or you're sending out four or five extra flyers but write down the action steps that you know right now you can do in the areas on your pie health relationship, career, finance, spiritual, write them down. Like I'm gonna listen to every morning, uh, I take public transportation, I'm riding in the car, and I'm gonna listen to something positive and spiritual off of YouTube, it's free. You just listen to that on YouTube, so when you get up and you're fixing your coffee, or on the way to the gym, or when you're on the treadmill, instead of listening to music, you're gonna listen to something spiritual. I mean, you can put two together. You can put your spiritual one with your exercise one. But those are just some ideas I hope to help. I hope you share these videos also. As always, it's up to you to make your life matter.